Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to FPRL Tier 1 after the, I should call it the winter break really, but I'll call it the Christmas break. We've had a couple of weeks off over the Christmas period, so a happy Christmas and New Year's to everybody. I hope it was a good one, but we're back with some Tier 1 action. Two races left of this season, we're back in... So we're back in Portimao. Uh, we are here for the first time, of course, uh, recently added to the game. Portimao, it's a big one today. And believe it or not, the championship can be decided today. Uh, depending on, obviously, the finishing positions of the two drivers which are fighting for that championship. And those following the league closely will know that that is indeed Hirsch S2004 and Object Fungus 168. I'm joined in the commentary box today by my good friend TJM1992. TJ, welcome. Yeah. How are we, first of all? Yeah, thanks, Bella. I'm good. Thanks yourself. Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. And looking forward, hopefully, to a good race here today around Portimao, at the very least. It's a circuit I enjoy, uh, particularly from the from the few few laps that I've done around here. Uh, is a circuit that you enjoy, TJ? Yeah, it is. I feel, I feel uh, I've got a good pace around here. There's a couple of turns that I struggle with, so I think my drive driver struggle to turn eight. Because then away, going up that hill, um, potential spinning, but uh, yeah, I really enjoy this track personally. Yeah, and I think that's echoed by a few of the drivers. Aren't they? I don't think this is a track that particularly drivers hate as such. I do think that turn eight, as you said, is a sticky point for a lot of drivers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how many of the drivers struggle around there today. Uh, we've got a few drivers out on track at the moment, five to be precise. It's saying on my screen that Grounds is out there on medium tyres. He is indeed out there on medium tyres. Uh, TJ, do you want to shed some light on that? Is there any reason you think he might be going for the medium tyres? Is, is the softs very favourable around here? Did you want to save them for the race? I, I'd personally be saving the mediums for the race. Um, the, the, only, the only way I could see is using mediums up now is if there's potential for the um, rain later in the, in the qualifying or rain for the race. Yep, definitely. Obviously the drivers have a bit more information at the moment than ourselves, so if any of the drivers are currently tuned into the stream. Please let us know in the Twitch chat. It will be most helpful if you could let us know. We are on board with Groundsy at the moment as he comes through turn seven and he gets to your favourite corner, turn eight. Oh, he's a little bit of snap of oversteer there, but does catch it on the exit. He's at quite a bit of the curb. Here he is coming to the end of that sector two. Let well, the drivers take a wide line from here, not using as much of the exit curb as you might have thought. A little bit of a twitch in the middle of the corner there. Down to third gear. Some drivers take that in second or third. Coming around the final corner now. He needs good perch off this final corner. He's running a bit wide than he would like to there. Perhaps owing it to being on the medium tyres. Let's see what time he can put in as he crosses the line. He is valid. Looks like a little bit of a twitch there as well. My straight, and of course, it is the fastest and only time at the moment of 118.8 from him. I, I imagine he's going to be disappointed with that. That's um, it'll definitely be quicker than that. I, I'd imagine the low 118s are going to be the cut off here. Yep, it is going to be that is we are in tier one, of course, as well. So, on paper, these should be the 20 fastest drivers we have in FPRL at the moment. Giving that the cutoffs will be a little bit lower due to that. It's going to be tasty these last two races in FPRL, TJ. And I don't want you to pick somebody for the title at the moment. But I know you've been keeping a close eye on proceedings in Tier 1. 
So it is, of course, the two contenders. We should obviously put a mention out there for Ali Ferrari, who would have been competing if it wasn't for his. He's got a setup issue at home, so he's unable to race the last two races. He would be in the fight. But out of the two drivers left, TJ, who do you think's got the edge at the moment? Oh, I, I generally don't know. Both drivers have, have been fighting tooth and nail. Um, been, as you mentioned, they've been pushing Ali Ferrari as well. It's, it's really close between them all. Um, I can't pick a driver personally. I, I, I think it's that close between them. Um, and I think strategy is going to be key in this one personally. Um, if they have to go on form, it's probably Bobby Harrison for, for me personally. Oh, sorry, Hannah Harrison. Hirsch. <laughs> so yeah. I, that, that's that's because I was on top of Harrison then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's easy. To, he, he does drive an Aston Martin, I guess. So he, he's at least the teammate of one of the drivers in the fight. So it's not a completely wild uh, prediction there. But I, I think everyone understood that you meant Hirsch there. Um, so yeah, I think you know, kind of. The, I think the two drivers that are left really are are two drivers that deserve to be in the fight. They're both very consistent. Uh, it's going to be a big talking point, I'm sure, uh, definitely for next week's race, uh, depending on the outcome of today's race. Uh, a few reserve drivers here today, TJ. Been a bit of a recruitment driver over the Christmas period ahead of Season 3, as most people know in the, in the uh, league. We are planning on expanding to three tiers. Is there any reserves you've got your eye on tonight, TJ? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Louis Swan's probably the biggest one I've got my eye on. He, he has shown incredible pace during the social races. Um, initially placed in Tier 2, um, but with his pace he had, there, there was no question he was Tier 1 pace. Um, and I'm really interested to see what he can do against his full-time drivers. Yeah, definitely. And I think those who tuned in for the social race, or even took part in them, would echo that sentiment. So, let's see what he can do in a field of complete tier one drivers and as you said that cutoff is coming down quite quickly so super bait with the fastest time at the moment of the 117.0 for alpha tari uh, he is a reserve driver for alpha tari an mv33 recently promoted to the alpha romeo full-time seat currently second on the leaderboard he's shown good pace so far i think the recruitment of tier one has been fantastic and we've got many fast drivers in here now and um, that could play its part in the title race, of course, if they're deemed to have faster pace than Hirsch and Object Fungus. But Hirsch at the moment in third place with a 117.3. So that's not bad from him, is it? No, not at all. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the, the recruitment team done a fantastic job for getting drivers in Tier 1. And yeah, it's um, it, as much focus as on the title battle here that, as you mentioned, that the, these reserve drivers could potentially throw a span on the works. Definitely. Now his teammate, Super Batesy for the day, is on first position in this Q1 at the moment. Dean crosses the line to go second with a 17-2. Alpha Tari 1-2 at the moment. I think he'll be very happy with that lap. We know he's moved to his wheel in recent weeks and he's shown improved pace since doing that. And a 17-2 from Dean there, that's a very good time. Yeah, definitely. But both, shout out to both of drivers there. Super Batesy with, with the 117 flat and Dino with his 117 two on the wheel. Um, they've, they've definitely thrown down some early markers. Definitely the two Alpha Tower is looking ominous at the moment for the rest of the field. Yet to see the pace of fast drivers such as AMS Drive and Collateral Ads. We know they've got the pace in their cars to It's the two Ferraris I've mentioned there. Coincidentally, we know that they've both got pace to get their cars up the grid but yet to set a fast lap of course we're currently riding with Lucky Lambert who appears to be on a cool down lap now yeah I've just I've, I've, I'm, I'm on board with uh, Clark Lads here and him and Harris, Harrison I, 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 I probably got it wrong but the other Alston Martin driver have been really close during this lap um, I'm not sure whether Clark Lads has been a bit hampered during his, uh, his fast lap here yep of course and it is such an aerodynamic track at the best of times. Water them out. And being too close to the car in front can really cost you. So that 17-8 from Collateral has perhaps not as representative as we thought. As we follow Lucky Lambert through turn one, then you have to be so careful on the exit there not to invalidate. That was the first gear, incidentally, there. 
In another corner, which causes this usual people to turn three. Some people spin over and widening Bella's eight there, but coming down now to. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get this wrong, but is this turn six? I've been told that we have to shout out turn six tonight. Yeah, I think it is. By David Lowface. I think it's got an interesting name, hasn't it, TJL? Um, yeah, so it's in the, uh, the Craig Jones corner. And does, if, for the viewers, do you want to inform everyone who Craig Jones is? Um, yes, he was a super sport driver um, who unfortunately died at Brands Hatch in 2008. That's nice that they've named a corner in Portugal after him, so fair play to the organisers of the Portimao track for that. Um, we got told to mention that tonight, actually, um, by our resident guy of Fun Facts, David Lowface, who obviously most people tuning in on a Thursday are greeted to his lovely voice. Well, Lucky Lambert crosses the line and goes second with a 17.04.8, three thousandths behind Super Batesy currently in the pits. I think he knows he's through with that. TJ, Lucky Lambert, looking at the tyres at the moment. He's done three laps on those. Do you think there's more performance left in those if he wanted to use them later in the qualifying session? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, if, uh, for qualifying definite, I think two or three laps is, is the limit. If you could try to push him a bit too any more than that, you, you're going to start losing your performance and maybe sliding in and out of the corners. Yep, so now we're running with AMS Drive, who is another Ferrari driver that we spoke about running very wide there between 7 and 8. He has kept it from invalidation. Up the hill here. Just a tight right hander. Like I said, people take a wide line through here. And he's done pretty similar there using all the exit this time. MS Drive telling us it's a purple sector in sector 2. I'm not too sure how much I believe the graphic though. We'll see across the line, of course. Coming around the final corner, as I mentioned, you want a better entry here to get a fast exit, much better than the onboard effort we found from Browns early. Bit of traffic ahead in Silverside Boy. Oh. And lots of traffic ahead in Silverside Boy. And an invalidation from AMS Drive because of that. Yeah, so, I imagine I'm not too impressed about that. I think Silverside could have done a little bit more to get out of the way there. It was Silverside on a hot lap? I don't think he was. He was 13 seconds slower across the line according to the graphic in the top right obviously viewers who are keen to know our driver lineup will note that Silverside Boy is in an Alfa Romeo today and uh, due to him having a change of heart and returning to FPRL in the mid-season break we love to see it but he lost his regular Red Bull drive so that's why he's in a different team's livery this week and he's in the wars early on there TJ so do you think anything will go to the stewards about that one? Uh, I imagine so. If AMS drives clips that, I imagine he's going to ask the stewards to have a look at it for definite. Um, it does look like Silverside could have done a little bit more to get out of the way. Um, and as you mentioned, it, it ruined his AMS's drives lap as well. So that, that's potentially a set of, set of tyres there he's wasted. Yep. So AMS drive, of course. Interesting. Now, we'll just look at Knocker we got. We'll just flick to AMS drive. For the moment he does have enough ERS but he does look like he's yeah he's invalidating this one so he's clearly taken the slow lap I just wanted to speak about this briefly TJ uh, with the ERS it has been known to be a, a power hungry circuit this one in terms of the ERS so do you think that you can do two push laps in a row or do you have to take that rest lap and rebuild the batteries before you do another push lap I think you've got to, personally, I, I think you've got to take a rest lap after you've done a fast lap at the, uh, the from the, the last corner down to, the, to turn one. Um, it's it absolutely drains GRS, um, and there's not many corners to try to recharge it either. So yeah, I think once you've done that first push lap, you've got to cool, you've got to bring effort back down and recharge and push again. Definitely. Definitely, and we've seen that as a characteristic from drivers who just seem to run out of ERS towards the line briefly. Because it's uphill, it does cost you more than it would do normally if it was just a flat road, of course, going up a hill with no ERS. He's going to punish you a lot more, but we're still on board with AMS Drive. Now, through the final sector, and uh, let's see if he gets any traffic this time. According to the track map, he's only got, I think it's a Williams ahead of him at the moment. Pulled over very, very early. 
and gets out of the way. That's nice one. Knocker he got there. So no traffic this time from AMS Drive. A representative lap time. He's won races already this season so far and crosses the line <laughs> and goes fastest just from Super Batesy. Another 117.0. About two hundredths quicker than the Alpha Tari on this occasion then. Yeah, he's done really well on them uh, on them soft tyres. I, I generally thought after two two laps he wouldn't be able to get the pace, but he's um, he's certainly keeping them tyres nice and alive to to get that time on three, three old um, softs. Definitely, as you know, three lap old softs them. So it'll be interesting to see whether he can get more use out of them later in the session. We're with shots too drippy now. A little bit quiet over the social season. We've not heard too much from him, but he's back here in Portimao and he crosses the line. And goes 10th fastest then with a 17-4, 1,000th of a second behind Klutschak, who is currently in ninth place for Alpine. There. So who's in the danger zone at the moment there? With just less than three minutes to go, I think. I can't tell accurately because there's a yellow flag graphic in the top left corner very handily. There we go, two and a half minutes left to go. And it is currently leaving us in Q1. Groundsy, Silverside Boy, Twins, T-Jerk and Brookie Nanny Messi who you'd probably say on a 19-1 at the moment TJ that's not really representative time. No definitely not. Brookie Nanny Messi will be definitely hoping to go to this as he invalidates his fast lap as well so he'll, he'll be uh, he'll be pushing to get around this lap to get another lap set. Um, once again there's a couple of guys in his, in his bottom five, Twins, Silver Side Boy, um, Groundsy as well. All, all of them will be hoping to get bare laps here. Um, so it, 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 it's going to be very tight, I think. Well, TJ pulls into the pit, so he definitely won't improve. Groundsy, Silver Sign, and Twins all on an outlap, and Brookie technically on a cooldown lap after invalidating. He will be able to go again, of course, uh, with the amount of time left in the session, but they really have got one run now. It's nice to see Groundsy back in the FPRL league races absent from a couple recently i believe when he's back here today in portimao hopefully here for the last two he'll be wanting to put a good show on his return to the league here on his outlap who's on a fast lap at the moment then let's have a look at some reserves um is there any out there at the moment knocker we got on an outlap lewis one on a lap at the moment but half a second down through the first sector so this isn't going to be an improvement so let's watch Brookie Nanny Messi then he invalidated into turn one on his last push effort let's see what he does this time 50% ERS it'll be interesting to see if that gets him running tie lap runs a little bit oh, wide again no. and invalidates once again I can't see how much time's left in the session yeah, 34 think... seconds yeah so that's, that's, that's him out. out he'll be very disappointed with that very disappointed Right now, board with Silverside Boy now. He's got Knocker. He got just ahead of him. I'm just wondering, Knocker. He got. He's on a fast lap. He's under no obligation here, Knocker. He got to get out the way of Silverside Boy, and it looks like Silverside Boy hasn't backed off enough. In fact, there's a, a McLaren ahead of them now, which I'm assuming is Brookie anyway, so he should get out the way and does. Yeah, well, Silverside Boy surely is feeling the effect here of some kind of drag off the back of that Williams. Yeah, definitely, especially through the, this sector of the track. It, 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 it'd be so hard and sliding out the corners, I imagine. Um, but maybe he had to stay this close to make sure he goes lapping. Yep, so you can see qualifying has finished then. And we will ride with these drivers across the line then. So Silverside Boy must massively be trying to get some kind of toe from the back of the Williams who crosses the line himself now. Takes it over to 30. Silverside Boy up to 12th then, so that's surely him through now. Groans is going to cross the line next from 18th. And just goes into 14th then. And I think on that basis we have our bottom five then, TJ. Yeah, we do. Um... So yeah, so we're in, in this session we've lost Brukinani Messi, OMTT Jerk, Swins 2157, Harrison 59 and Lewis 1. I think the uh, the, well, the two disappointed drivers there are going to be Lewis 1 and Brukinani Messi. Well I think because Lewis 1 joined late, I think the notorious 
F1 2021 glitch has occurred. And <laughs> it's saying he's currently on an outlap, even though the session has ended. So TJ or anyone watching wants to put a message in the Discord and tell him to retire in the pits, please. As the session has ended, uh, but let's get that message to him so we can move on to Q2. Yeah, just Clearly, he thinks he's still got time to do a lap, but he hasn't. Yep. So while we wait for Louis to retire in the pit, a big uh, hello to the to the guys in the in the Twitch chat. Uh, apologies, I haven't mentioned you sooner. Um, just having a quick flick through a couple of drivers while you're talking. So Dino's in here. Um, Cadders, Monkey Boy, Kachow, Sergeant Manoff, AG Passy, Silverside, hello gents. Um, a new follower potentially, Liam Cornforth2, who says watch MV33 Red Bull. Yeah, and a big welcome to FPRL Liam, actually, who joined the recruitment server earlier today. Hope to see you racing soon and um, unfortunately it doesn't look like Lewis One has got the message here um, and he's still going round Ooh, apologies for Mr Driver, hi fish sticks as well give us a wave yep yeah, Lee Carey give us a wave <laughs> so Lewis One um, still going round at the moment is out of qualifying, I should say, in 16th place. Um, I'm not too sure what the procedure is going to be here if he gets through, because he isn't through. Yeah. Um, is it a case of retiring in Q2? Well, he is currently slower than his fastest lap at the moment, so it might not be enough to get him through anyway, hopefully. Fingers crossed, because otherwise um, we might have a bit of an issue here. Um, crosses the line. Yeah, he stayed P16, I think. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, he did stay P16, you can see on his dashboard there. Uh, there is a god <laughs> who avoided... <laughs> Any kind of controversy there, but there is your finishing order then for Q1. And the five drivers we lost, it is indeed Lewis One, we call him. Not to repeat his phone number live on stream. Harrison, 59, in 17th in the Aston Martin Twins, <coughs> in 18th in the Alpine. T Jerk, 19th in the Haas. He shouldn't be disheartened with that. We've seen incredible race performances from him over the past two events, so. Watch him in the race. He's got the, the knack to take it from the back of the grid up to a good points position recently. And Brookie Nanny Messi, TJ, who you mentioned, will be very disappointed with that in 20th place. Yeah, um, I think, you know, it, it just, I know Brookie Nanny Messi invalidated his lap, but it just proves how good the uh, recruitment's been for these reserve drivers that it's so close between them all. Um, and yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what happens in Q2 now. The, the strategy that the, the, the drivers take. Will he rest in mediums or do he want the better pace from the start? Yeah, interesting you mentioned that, TJ. I know talking to some of the drivers in the week and talking to them actually, because obviously there's been such a build up to this race and it's been really on the, the, the minds of drivers over the break, the festive break. They are really split on strategy, so it'll be interesting to see. As you said, what what tyres drivers do take here at the start of Q2. And you can see by the graphic there, so we've got seven drivers on mediums, eight, of course, on softs at the moment. Uh, so it really is split down the grid, isn't it, TJ? Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I think this does um, tell us that it is going to be a dry race, um, or not unless each driver is trying to fool us in. Maybe laying a bit of rubber down, but for the amount there is, I'm pretty certain it's a dry race from this point. Yep, of course. Uh, we've, I don't think we've had a weather update in the Twitch chat yet. TJ's all over the Twitch chat, 
giving people shout outs left, right and centre and of course looking out for any information that the drivers give us uh, as we're pretty limited here in the commentary box but as I mentioned that split of the tyres there's been a few people that have changed their minds so 10 drivers now with the medium tyre selected so it looks like it might be the favoured tyre then uh, in qualifying. Yeah, that surprised me as you mentioned. A couple of drivers have said that the start on the mediums could be a disadvantage. Um, but obviously the guys on the mediums don't feel that way. Definitely then, so it is Tornado on track. <laughs> we'll go first here in Q2. <laughs> Let's see what he the, can do here. The shout out on the Twitch stream that it's a wet race. Um, <laughs> obviously, I think the, the, the guys are having a laugh, but uh, yeah, there's, there's wet race call outs on the Twitch stream. And uh, yeah, Monkey Boy has uh, shoved up Joshua and Dean for the laps in Q1. Thank you for that, Monkey Boy. He'll enjoy me saying live on the stream as Tornado gets very wide there off the turn three, but avoids invalidating importantly there. And it is a known thing in this game, of course. If you run that little bit wide and just back off the throttle slightly, you can avoid invalidating, which I think he's put to good use there to ensure that this lap will count so far anyway. What's interesting here is, is I'm, I'm on board with two Mercedes drivers and they're so close to one another. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they haven't give each other space. Yep, interesting as Tornado does invalidate them, so the lap is a waste, and it is behind him. Uh, Silverside Boy has gone very wide there. Who else was going on here? MV33 Red Bull is coming round the final corner on his push lap then, so he was right at the top of the field in Q1. Let's see what his medium tyre pace is like across the line then in the Alfa Romeo and it's a 17.9 from him then an Alfa Tari, a very fast Alfa Tari spikes come over the line as well and there it is Super Batesy a 17.7 from him pipping MV33 Red Bull by just short of two tenths and as you mentioned the Mercedes drivers then looks like they've spread out a little bit over the lap and Lucky Lambert crosses the line and goes with a 17.8 and if that gap is anything to be read into, TJ, as you mentioned, <laughs> indeed, Gronzy's time not representative there, a 124.2 then. So as you mentioned uh, there, TJ, it looks like that the Mercedes drivers just following each other a little bit too closely has cost them, especially Gronzy at, at the very least. Yeah, and that, that's the last thing they want, especially on these medium tyres. Um, <laughs> they, they, they would have wanted to probably do maybe, maybe one, maybe two at a push. You know, there's loads of us who can invalidate it down this track and do the track limits and yeah, Gronzy, Gronzy won't be very happy with that. A very good lap there from Object Fungus in that championship hunt then a 17-0, one of the rare drivers to select the soft tyres then. His championship rival Hirsch S2004 on the mediums then, so currently the championship rivals split on strategy. That might make some interesting reading into the race. Yeah, it's um, objects obviously chosen for the better pace off the start and um, an early pit stop. Um, obviously, he's got the he's got a two stop strategy: soft, soft, mediums, or soft, medium, soft. Or will he risk going soft hard? Yeah, it all depends on safety cars, of course, and they are a feature of many races. We're on board with collateral ads here, just about to start the final sector. Then let's see how tight he can keep it. And this final right hander. It's a little bit shy of the apex, but some people do take a wider line to get on the power a little bit early there, making use of the outside of the track, keeping it tight through the complete. I don't particularly like that final corner. No, I <laughs> don't. Yeah. Clearly, Collateral Lanstos with a 17 3 on the medium tyres. That's more like the pace that we know he's got in that Ferrari TJ. Yeah, that's, a, that's he'll be really happy with that lap. Um, and that just proves that the guys behind him need to probably go back out if they want to make sure they get through. Um, Gronzy, I know we've been discussing him. He's invalidated the second fastest lap. So, I, I, will he rest continuing on mediums? 
or will he put a set of softs on now knowing that the medium's just uh, scrubbed off? So it's just there, TJ, but we've got Hirsch coming over the line, the championship leader on his set of mediums, and let's see what he can do coming over the line. Can he get close to that top medium time? He can indeed, and he beats it by a one thousandth of a second there. The times have been so close so far in this qualifying session. Great stuff at the moment from the drivers. And Hirsch there just bettering, as I said, the top medium time at the moment in collateral ads by one thousandth of a second. He has put two laps into those tyres, but I can't imagine that an extra lap on mediums will really cost him too much in the race if he does start on that set of tyres. No, of course not. Um, but he does, uh, given how quick these mediums are, once it's back to these low times on mediums, it says that Object Fungus has got a lot more time on them softs. Or, Hirsch has got fantastic pace, and Object Fungus needs to find a little bit more on those softs. Because I know the deficit is a little bit more than two and a half tenths between the two tyres. Yeah. So, Hirsch showing fantastic pace in this crucial race at the moment. Dean then goes with a 17-2 in the Alpha Tari on his soft tyres then. Not able to get close to Object Fungus at the moment, but a good time from him. Yeah. And AMS Drive then we're riding on board with in the Ferrari. Also, one of four drivers to currently have selected those soft tyres. Interesting that he felt the need to do those soft tyres, TJ, considering his pace in Q1. Yeah, maybe he doesn't feel too comfy on the mediums on the wheel. Um, or maybe he's hoping that he can get a good start on the softs and then um, just play the long game on the mediums later in the race. Well, he goes fastest with the 16.8 then, so that's a brilliant time from him as Grousey comes into the pits just behind his teammate Lucky Lambert. Again, the two Mercedes close together on the circuit. We know Lucky Lambert is a reserve driver. He's not particularly usually in the obviously in the Mercedes. Ali Ferrari has that seat, but unfortunately won't be taking part, as we mentioned, in the last two races. I don't know whether it's some choreographed teamwork here or whether they're just by chance finding themselves together on the circuit at the moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it is interesting they're close. Yeah, if anything, it's really hurt Groundsy over, over um, um, Lucky Lambert, to be honest, because he hasn't managed to set a decent up on the mediums. So if they, if they were trying to pull something off, it definitely hasn't worked out. Yeah. Hasn't worked out, has it? Grosie unable to get a better time in on those mediums. Not many drivers out there at the moment. There's two out on track. AMS Drive, who we just saw complete his lap. And this man, Joshua Meister, currently 14th with a 148.9. <laughs> I'm assuming he can go faster than that. <laughs> We're about to find out as he hits the sector 2 <coughs> interval. As he runs very wide, though, but doesn't invalidate by some miracle there, despite taking the widest line I think I've ever seen without invalidation through that corner. Yeah. And he has backed off now, actually. So, let's have a look at his ERS. He has got enough to go again. But should he choose not to come in the pits, but there is five laps to go here, so he might want to pit, and he does. Yeah. Five, five minutes to go, and he chooses to pit, obviously, to... Oh, Mashubi, put the softs on now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the drivers do here. Obviously, the graph shows that a lot of them have sat in the pits with a set of softs on now. So, are they just doing that to, to scare the competitors, or are they going to come out and set a lap? I mean, the, the field is so close. From, from, um, from P6 to P10, there's only two temps in it. Three temps to to P, sorry, P6 to P10 three temps. There's only five temps to P5, so it, it just proves how close it, the, the tier is currently. Definitely. It is very close at the minute. We've seen that in Q1 and now we've seen it in Q2. As you rightly say there, we're currently riding with Noko he got in 12th. He's stuck with those mediums. Interesting to note that a lot of the field then, obviously, feeling a little bit cautious. We know they're not out on track. They have all 
ready to set of soft, I should say, in case they need to come out. I imagine the knocker we got, though, might... If I was here, I'd be thinking about coming into the pits for sure and getting a set of softs on now. Yeah, he's, he's leaving it really late. I mean, by the time he goes to the pits, comes back out and goes back around, he's probably only got one shot at setting lap here. Half a second up at the moment, which puts him just on the bubble of getting through in terms of MV33 and shots too drippy times. Let's see what he can do across the minor, whether he does indeed come into the pit. So he is going faster. How much does he want to start in those medium tyres? He is going to complete the lap then across the line now. Doesn't improve enough to get out of that bottom five then so he stays 12th yeah i can't see how he's got time to get back around now put the softs on and get back out i think that's um i think that's his qualifying over here's the two alfa romeos then now on a fast that they have gone for the soft tires mv33 red bull then goes into third place on his set of softs silver side boy invalidates how crucial is that going to be for his chances of a Q3 appearance this week? Who have we got coming across the line here? Is it Lucky Lambert? It is indeed, and he goes fastest now with a 116.7. Great lap from him. We know he's got pace in that Mercedes. We've got a Red Bull now starting his flying lap. Joshua Meister then has also continued on the medium tyres, uh, TJ. Do you think that he really wants to start on those mediums for some reason? Because surely it's a no-brainer to put the softs on. Yeah, they must do. Um, they must feel really comfortable on the medium to feel the strategy plays bare on him. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure why he won't come in for softs. Him and Knocker, we got them choosing not to come in for the soft tyres. The silver side boy should get round again. To start a lap, he will get round again as he goes through the final corner. Once again, we can't see how long is left of the session, thanks to the handily placed flag <laughs> graphic in the top left. A minute and a half to go, and Silverside will start his lap then. And let's see if he invalidates down into turn one. Always good to put the drivers under pressure down into turn one. Oops, it's like a little bit there, a little bit tentative on the exit there. I think he was cautious of invalidating, to be honest. Has kept it clean so far then. Four, a little bit wide, but does okay. He's two tenths up at the moment, according to the Delta. Then, so yeah, I'm but drivers coming over just the line on board now, with Joshua, though. and he's improved, but not enough. So, yep, thanks for that, TJ. Joshua Lamaster is indeed out of qualifying. Ronzi will have to do another lap. As Lucky Lambert obviously comes into the pits after setting that 16-7. There's a Ferrari coming around of Collateral Ads who will start his flying lap now. Same as Shots Too Trippy then. And there's an Alpine closely following the Klutzjack who will also start his flying lap then. So there's a row of drivers here about to start the lap. Super Batesy somehow finds himself in 10th place and hasn't improved in the Alpha Tauri then. So one of the drivers from Q1 doesn't improve and surely is on the cusp there of dropping out in Q2. Silverside Boy does improve to 8th place then. Will that be enough to get him through? Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. There's a few fast drivers out there. Shots, he'll be open to improve. I'm on board of Gronzy and he's, um, he's about to hit sector 2 and he is... He's 4.8 seconds quicker so he's... He's going to set a decent lap here. <laughs> he is going to set a decent lap, but that is 4.8 seconds quicker than a 24-2, so I'm not too sure how much time he lost in the final sector. We are about to find out. Hirsch in Valentex as we saw, and we'll pull into the pit lane. So it is Rousey to come across the line next here in his Mercedes. Will he knock out the very fast Super Batesy? Oh, no, no, he stays 14th then. So it's down to shots to Drippy, who has invalidated then. So Super Batesy in the Alpha Tari comes across the line and knows he's through. And that is why it's dribbled over the line there with an 18-7. <laughs> so we have lost then 
our five drive. I think, in fact, I think Shotsu Drippy doesn't have a front wing. So it looks like he's lost it somewhere as he does a bit of weaving into the pit lane there. Wants to warm his tyres up for pit entry. Um, but we have lost him from Q2 then on his return to FPRL. Yeah, he'll be disappointed with that. Um, but he was blowing a few cobwebs, cobwebs off that car as it was anyway. He hasn't raced it since uh, before the, the Christmas break. Um, but yeah, his uh, shots are probably the most disappointing out of all that. Oh no, I'd say that Gromsey as well. He, he'll probably, he, he was probably open for Ban P14. Um, Tornado, I'm assuming he's a new reserve driver. I haven't seen much of him, so I'm not sure about his true pace. Um, but yeah, just just, just look how close some time is off from um, P10 down to P, P14, really. It's three temps in it. Yeah, it really was anyone we could have lost in that session, especially, as you said, in that bottom six. So it is indeed Tornado who was unable to get a lap in in the McLaren. He is 15th then for the race later on. Groundsy 14th for Mercedes. Was a soft set of tyres he used as well to make it all the more bruising for him. But unable to get a fast time in. He is 14th for the race. Noko E. Gott 13th for Williams. He'll join his teammate who will be on the road just ahead of him in Shots 2 Drippy, who might be a little bit disheartened by that. We know Shots 2 Drippy has had some good race pace, and he's usually been up in at least the bottom end of Q3, in the top 10, but he is 12th today. And Joshua Meister in the Red Bull then just missing out on Q3 by the skin of Super Bates's teeth at the very least. Just shy of four hundreds there, the gap between them two then. So Super Batesy, TJ, we saw who had fantastic pace in Q1. What, I, think, I wasn't quite following him as much in that session. I don't know if you saw anything that happened to him there, but perhaps a little bit disheartened by that pace on those medium tyres. Yeah, I, I don't think he did much wrong, to be honest. I did, I did catch it, and it seemed like he was keeping it clean through the corners. Um, but I think this comes back to what some of the drivers saying about the mediums. You don't feel... Don't feel hooked up to the track, and maybe that's why his issue was here. Yeah, he was the slowest of the medium tyre runners who made it through, and you would expect, in terms of his raw pace anyway, for him to have a bit of a gap to the drivers who were pushing him for that final Q3 place. As we await to progress to Q3, um, uh, so we can just look at the top 10 at the moment then so it was lucky lambert who took p1 in q2 ams drive just behind just over 10th behind him championship challenger object fungus in third for aston martin then so the gap between hirsch and object at about two and a half tenths do you think that's telling really for what we could see in the race tj the, Gap only being two and a half tenths. It's not. It's not massive considering the tire difference. No, not at all. I imagine Object Fungus might be a little bit disheartened in that. I, I mean, I didn't follow his lap through. I didn't think he had any mistakes or anything. But yeah, two, two and a half tenths between the softs and mediums. It's it's nothing. You know, I, I'd, I'd be expecting you know half, half a second to a second difference in the softs to mediums. As I believe the culprit we are waiting for to go forward uh, to Q3 is Brookie Nani Messi, who has returned to his Xbox. <laughs> whatever button we were waiting for, and we are now ready to go into Q3 then. So, TJ, I don't like to press my co commentators, and I don't like it when I'm pressed as a co commentator, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to pick, I'm going to ask you anyway to pick. Who you think is going to be on pole after this? Oh, yeah. I think there's three or four drivers got duty here personally. Um, I'm going. I'm going to pick a top three out here, and I'm going to go for AMS. You go as far as a top three. I'm going as far as a top three. <laughs> so, In any order, or um, I think AMS driver will get pole. I think Hirsch should be right behind him. 
And then, and this is the bit I'm a bit torn on currently. Uh, object or MV33. There we go then, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. Get down to the bookies. Put your top three on. You've got it on TJ's authority here. AMS Drive, followed by Hirsch, and then one of two people. Make your own choices on that one. <laughs> He's basically given us a top four there. <laughs> he doesn't know which way three or four is going to go. <laughs> he said top three, but he's given us a top four. So TJ clearly doesn't know simple maths, unfortunately. <laughs> my, my, got, got confused on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, a big shout. But it is your favourite from. Oh, go on, carry on. I was going to say a big shout out to uh, the legend David Lollface on the Twitch stream. I can see he's uh, commenting. Apologies, don't mention sooner, David. TJ is supposed to be all over that. What's going on? We've, we've been too into qualifying. Oh, we have been too into qualifying. It's been a very entertaining close session so far. I'm sure Q3 is going to deliver much of the same as it is the two Ferraris then who are going to get us underway. Adds a little bit close to the back of AMS Drive. You'd expect him to have backed off a little bit more there. Perhaps wanting some kind of toe, he thinks, will give him a benefit rather than the drag that will come off through the corners. Well, let's follow AMS Drive's lap as he invalidates him, but is he going to get out of the way of his teammate here quickly enough? Is he going to impede him here in turn three? Or is he going to give him a little bit of a toe? And this looks very well choreographed <laughs> between the Ferraris there. Yeah, that's, that's spot on, that work. is. That's absolute spot on. Fantastic stuff between AMS Drive and Collateral Lads. We should mention AMS Drive standing in for AG Passy, our regular Tier 1 driver today, who couldn't be with us, unfortunately. So it is him in his place. I'm sure he's done AG Passy proud there with his teamwork with Collateral Lads following his invalidation. Let's see if that is to Adzi's advantage then. Of course, it's a purple sector too. He's the only one that's set a representative time so far. So let's see what he can do around the final corner. Comes around the right hand a little bit wider, but as I mentioned, he probably wants that good speed on exit there. Just seems like this corner never ends. I know they're two separate ones, but for me, it's just one big right hander as he comes up to the finish line now. Let's see what time it is. He goes across the line. It's a 1.69 from Collateral Lads in the Ferrari as his teammate AMS Drive, who did invalidate, will go again on that set of tyres then. Yeah, we've seen it all throughout all qualifying, but um, there was Kluszczyk and Object Fungus really close going on on past, on past laps as well. I, I'm not, I might say that's a trick here, but the drivers are, are really enjoying being close together. Yep, they are enjoying being close together. And it has a benefit to Kluszczyk, who is going to go again. I'm assuming he backed off the minutes. His lap he knew wasn't going to be representative. As we've got a Aston Martin then. Who's starting his first flying lap now. And we've got an Alfa Romeo just starting his first lap as well in MV30 through Red Bull then. So your pick for third or fourth place, who knows? <laughs> Anyone's guess. Drawing out a hat at this point. He could get third or fourth according to our mystic ball in the <laughs> commentary box. <laughs> yeah, ju just uh, just looking through the Twitch stream, a lot of people are backing AMS Drive to get Paul here. Um, Lucky Lambert, I, I do apologise, Lucky Lambert, um, but a lot of people calling through for P2 and Super Batesy to see it out as well. Um, and AMS Drive crosses the line, it is a 1.16.6 from the Ferrari driver. That is some benchmark then for the rest of the pack to chase. Dean comes across the line with a 116.9 and just pips collateral lads by six hundredths of a second there. Five hundredths of a second, I should say. I'm not on the counter who can't count <laughs> as he gets. It's five hundredths, ladies and gentlemen, not six hundredths there. I'm giving Dean too much credit, giving him an extra hundredth, but it's a great time from him in the Alpha Tauri then. As we've got Clouse Jack then crossing the line and another rep unrepresentative time from him as Object Fungus then. Your pick for second place goes second place with a 116.8 then in the Aston Martin. Crucial for him. Let's see what his championship challenge is doing at the moment then. He's currently in the middle sector. 
Oh, oh he retires. On it and he's, he's dropped it on track. He has indeed dropped it on track, so there'll be no more running for him in this session. He'll be furious with that. As Lucky Lambert pops in a time to go second place and put Object Fungus down to third. We're on board with Hirsch here through the final corner. Comes up to the line, crosses the line and goes fastest <laughs> then. <laughs> what a laugh. Two thousandths of a second separate Hirsch and AMS Drive. The driver who many picked for pole, Hirsch's name, never even come up in conversation. And somehow, he's on provisional pole. Yeah, I mean, that, that just proves how close it is. And that's what I've been saying throughout that it's, it's going to be a real close battle, this is. Um, and I can't wait to see how it's going to, how it's going to pan out. Um, you know, and even though Dino has uh, unfortunately retired from the session, a big shout out for his lap there. Uh, at 116.9, it, it, it's fantastic. Um, and he, he'll be full of confidence going into the race. He will indeed be full of confidence as Silverside Boy starts another flying lap in the Alfa Romeo then choosing not to come in and get the new set of tyres. We know tyre dead ground here isn't as bad as it is on other trucks. You can get a bit more laps out of the tyres, especially the soft tyre, which is naturally more fragile of course and choosing to stay out there and set another lap. It says a purple sector one. Again, I don't really believe the graphic as it's never really proved testing before in terms of people's pace. I think Hirsch has dropped it. I know he's on a cooldown lap, I imagine, in that final sector. Through turn eight now, Silverside Boy, as he's gonna come down and then back up the hill towards that right-hander. He takes a wide line, does he? He does indeed. Not as wide as some. Let's see how far he runs on the exit. Just keeps it within the track. Limits then to 52.5 as he goes through that second sector. So we've got a Alpine of Klusha who did finally put a representative time in. It's a 17.4 for him. Perhaps got a bit more pace in that Alpine then. And Silverside Boy, we will ride on board with across the line. And he goes ninth fastest then, just ahead of Super Batesy, who conveniently is just behind him on track, <laughs> just starting his first flying lap then. We know he's got pace in the Alpha Tari, Ooh. he didn't really show it in Q2. Lucky Lambert has just lost it, um, coming out of the, I'm not sure about the corner numbers here, but coming out of the final bend in, two, in sector 3. Um, but he is on 3 uh, lap old soft. He's on three lap old softs and he's choosing to get rid of those three lap old softs as he comes into the pitch then to get another set on ready for one last go. It's going to be a little bit tight. They'll probably wheel him in as quick as they can to get him round. We're with Super Batesy at the moment. Let's see what time he can set. Yet to invalidate so far, but just as I say that, commentator's curse. He invalidates. The minute I say it. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had to Fantastic. Do, it had to happen to someone. I think we kept it clean without the qualifying, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry that you're invented. <laughs> sorry for that one, Super Bait. See, we're back on board with AMS Drive as he's coming around the first sector, then up to this dreaded turn three that everyone hates, but he's making it look a doddle at the moment. No invalidation there from him in the Ferrari, and he's seven thousandths of a second faster. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to put him back onto pole position at the moment. Yeah, he just needs to keep it clean now. He can, he's come up to dreaded turn eight, and he looks like he's kept it nice and clean and keeps on track, and he has done. A little bit of a twitch on the exit. Um, Silverside Boy's retired. Looks like he's done it in the pits. Yep, he has indeed done it in the pit lane then. Oh. So it will be... AMS, AMS Drive, who lost. looks like his teammate just gets out of the way here. Yeah, he has just lost a little bit of time going through Sector 2, so hopefully he can gain a bit of time here. And it, it, it's going to be real close either way. And he's probably got enough to probably do a second push up if he, if he feels like it. As indeed crosses the line, but does take provisional pole then away from Championship Leader. 
Porsche S2004 gets out of the way beautifully for his Ferrari teammate who goes through turn one. And he does rip that pole position provisionally away from Hirsch. How crucial will that be? Is Hirsch now under pressure? He knows his championship rival at the minute is only two places behind him. He's on a fast lap. Keeps it a bit cleaner through there than AMS Drive did. I noticed a slight snap of oversteer through that corner from AMS Drive, but kept it clean in the end. And as you said, lost time through sector two, but made it up in sector three. This is the one for Hirsch now. He's not going to get another lap in. 50 seconds left on the clock. Coming around the final couple of corners and keeping it tight. He'll want to run it as close as he can here to the corner and take a tight line if possible to get enough time as he crosses the line. Oh. And what a time from the championship leader. Hirsch S2004, take that AMS drive, what have you got now? Yeah, it looks like AMS drive is about to start another fast lap here, so he'll be hoping for a nice clean lap, and he needs to keep it clean through sector two as Hirsch has retired on track. Has retired on track, and interestingly, it's just off turn one. I don't, I didn't catch it personally, I don't know if he did take, I know if you take too much inside curb through turn one it can send you into the wide barriers i don't know if that's what's happened but he should have been on a slowdown lap it's strange that he's retired there ams drives pulled up he won't go any quicker so ams drive has pulled up lucky lambert's 200th of a second down at the moment as he comes up over the line now will he improve for the final sector no he doesn't klushak put a decent time in there somewhere amongst all the magnus to do a 16-6 to take third then. Yeah. AMS Drive, as you said, it will not improve. So collateral adds then. Coming through the final sector now is a tenth and a half up on his time. What can he do through the final sector here? Can he put himself ahead of Object Fungus and do Hirsch a favour here? Through the final couple of corners. Can he get anywhere near his Ferrari teammate in second? Let's see then. Coming up to the line now in his Ferrari. And it's only seventh of a collateral. That's probably would have thought he could have got a little bit higher, at least onto the third row. But yeah, that but will be your top ten. Look at that Absolutely. between Absolutely. Go on, Sai. I was just going to say, absolutely fantastic from... Championship leader Hirsch, a 116-4 to take pole position by a tenth and a half. This man who we're watching now, Object Fungus, will start fifth. It's probably a good time to mention the race permutations. I've been reliably informed by Statman Monkey Boy Kurt that if Hirsch converts his pole into a race win and Object Fungus finishes lower than ninth, then he will be champion after this event and he's given himself the best possible opportunity with pole for the race in his house. As I said, over a tenth and a half quicker than AMS Drive in second. Third from Kluschak a 116.6. Lucky Lambert fourth in the Mercedes a 116.7. Object Fungus the championship challenger in fifth, 116.7, basically a 116.8. Super Batesy with a 116.8 as well. Just a thousandth behind was Clatterat in seventh. Eighth, Ultra Dean, who had that mishap. MV33 Red Bull, who you tipped for third or fourth in ninth. And Silver Side Boy in tenth. Yeah, apologies, Mad to come to the fish there, but MV33. Um, but yeah, it, it, say it felt qualifying. Look how, how close that pack is. The, the times are unbelievable, and it's, it's a real competitive league. Um, and we'll say it now, for everyone that's sorry, just wanted to say, just before he carried on, TJ, we'll say it now for all the drivers watching the stream, please do not ready up before the race. Please, please, please. Yes. Everyone that's tuned in the racing, do not press ready. I cannot emphasise this enough. It's happened so much recently. Be on your best behaviour. Um, 
Um, Don't want to speak too soon. <laughs> so a bit of inside information. Uh, Hirsch says his controller died, and that's why he had to retire on track. So luckily, it died when it did. It could have died in a lot worse position, probably 10 seconds before, and cost him that fast lap. But yeah, perf perfectly timed that was Hirsch. Um, Monkey Boy saying Hirsch on poles a massive advantage for his title charge. Indeed, definitely echo sentiment, echoed here, I think, by the commentary team. I think that's massive for his championship. While we take a quick, quick break here, I'm going to do what David Lowface calls a quick comfort break. But we all know when he says comfort, he means he's going to get a piss and a pint. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. So I will leave you in the great company of TJM, who's going to run through some in-depth information, putting you on the spot here, TJ. Give the viewers a bit of an overview. I will be back very shortly. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, uh, Bedel. Um, so yeah, it's a week for the drivers to take their comfort breaks, sort the strategies out, um, and get ready for the race, final preparations. Um... Yeah, so as Biddle said, that if um, if Hirsch can finish first and Object Fungus finishes ninth or lower, we will have our Tier 1 champion. Um, so, it's going to be fun. Um, I believe Object Fungus starts on the softs, Hirsch starts on medium, so Object should get the better getaway. Um, but it's not just about the start, it's about the long-term strategy. Um... <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's going to be real interesting. Don't don't turn us off just yet, the um, viewers. Um, keep interested, and uh, hopefully we can provide a really good race here for you. Um, I'm sure you uh, will be appreciative to that Brookie Nally Messi. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll inform that when he gets back. <laughs> yeah, and and you as well, David. I'm sure you'll be over the moon about that one. Um, I am just after a little bit of information about the standings. Uh, two seconds, sorry. Inside information on Silverside Boy as well, that he retired from Q3 because he had no tyres left. Tot, tot, tot. Should be doing that, silver side. Should be doing bad there, silver side boy. I get back, and all I can hear is you slating silver side boy. I've not <laughs> heard that. <laughs> I've not heard that in a while. I was just saying that the um, he, he retired from Q3 because he had no he had no tyres left. So I was saying he's a naughty boy for using his tyres off. Yeah, yeah, there's been. Well, we did see him pushing to get through. There's been some interesting comments in the uh, in the Twitch stream. Um, a lot of people are, are providing some nice comments for you, Biddle. Oh, that's nice. Pulling like your mouth, as, 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 as you, you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> Can I ask who the uh, culprits are? Uh, Brooke and Ali Massey. Of course. <laughs> and, I uh, wouldn't expect anything more than a disappointing comment from a 16-year-old Scottish child so thank you for that <laughs> thank you for that Brookie Nanny Messi always nice to hear your uh, what you've got uh, to say as an opinion as the drivers go off um, for their formation lap are you doing the rundown Biddle? they do indeed they do indeed TJ I'll leave you to do the rundown this time if you want to uh, for the viewers at home who forgot that Brookie Nanny Messi came last <laughs> That's if you right. want to um <laughs> Go through. Yeah, that's right. So uh, in last place is Buki Nani Messi, the uh, the absolute mouse. Um, he'll be hoping for a good start here. In 19th for uh, OMT T Jerk. 18th is Twins 2157. 17th is Harrison 59. 16th is our first reserve driver of Tier 1, Lewis 1. 15th is Tornado. 14th is the is Groundy, who uh, is returning for his first race for a long time. He'll be looking for really good results here. Knocker we got as P13. Shots too drippy in P12. Starts ahead of his Williams teammate. That'll be interesting if uh, team orders get played here. 
P11's Josh the Meister. P10, Silverside Boy. P9, MV33 Red Bull. Once again, starting to have his teammates. P8 is Arjit Dean. Dean has had a really good qualifying session and uh, full of confidence coming into this. P7 is Collateral Lads. P6 is Super Batesy. P5 is Object Fungus, who has been disqualified from formation lap and be hoping for a better start to his race here. P4 is Lucky Lambert. P3 is OMT Kluszczek. P2 is o AMS Drive. And P1, the championship leader, is Hirsch. Thank you for that, TJ. A great rundown there of the grid. And yeah, interesting to note the tyre choices of some drivers. So Twins and Gronzi both going for hard tyres. An unpopular choice, but perhaps looking to extend for perhaps a late safety car of some kind. Potentially going a little bit different to the tyres that the rest of the field have chose. Just as I've got the chat up now, David Lofay saying great stuff from Kluge. Great lap indeed it was. Unfortunately we missed it on the stream but they all lined up then ready for this crucial round 21 of FPRL tier one the penultimate race oh as we got drive through penalty super bait he went too early but it is lights out and away we go and Hirsch has kept his lead off the start AMS drive Follows behind him. Bit of contact there, and has Object Fungus gone round? He has indeed. Oh, no. Object Fungus in the Aston Martin falls right to the back of the pack. As there's a virtual safety car early on, then. Yeah, ground. Uh, on his as first, a, that was a full safety car. Ground on his first race back is retired at is retired at turn one. He'll be absolutely disappointed with that. Um, Groundsy has. Retired on his return, as you said, TJ. He's blaming his. I don't know what he's blaming. What would he. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit carried away there as uh, I, Super Batesy, I think it was. We've um, got the drive through. Lucky Lambert says uh, something to do with his AI. We didn't catch that. But the huge talking point there has got to be Object Fungus now runs P19. Swapping positions here, Dean and Superbase. Not sure what's going on there under safety car conditions. But indeed, Object Fungus, the championship challenger, at the back of the pack now. We saw them come through turn one, TJ. I don't know how much of you saw it. I just saw it in the bottom of my screen. It looked like yeah. Khrushchev was up the inside of Object Fungus. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me as well. And it's always tight through um, through turn one as it is. As Super Baiting is retired now. He had his drive through and he's retired. And I've just witnessed him. Oh, that's okay. It's giving it back to Dean. I was just going to say, I just saw it there as he came into the pit lane. He gave... He went round the outside of Dean, got a five second for speed in the pit lane, and then retired. Um, but it still let Dean go in the box first, which I'm glad about, because otherwise that would have been really unfair if you had to double stack there, Dean. But uh, a lot of drivers in the pits here, TJ. Um, I don't know if they need repairs or whether they're doing purely tactical changes, but... It should be noted, Championship Challenger Object Fungus onto the hard tyres then. Yeah, he's obviously going for a long game. He'll be able for a set, another safety car later in this race. I mean, really late, so he can probably put another set of softs on. But he has got a lot of work to do now if he wants to keep his um, title challenge alive. Indeed. And it looks like the result of all of that is that Kluge has kept third place in, despite his contact with Object Fungus there. Object Fungus, of course, starting from fifth, got a good start, was alongside third place man Kluzjak, and it just seemed like Kluzjak was. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I haven't seen obviously the footage, but I, all I know that he was on his inside, and then Object went round, which I'm assuming caused Gronzi's uh, DNF. 
Um, Super Bates, of course, retiring because of his drive through, I'm assuming. Didn't fancy carrying on because of that. And that's the reason he's retired. But absolutely huge championship ramifications here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's a long, it's a long way to go in this race. Another safety car could change it all up again. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of work for Object now. Um, he's just got to keep his head down, um, stay focused, keep it clean, and um, see how the race goes. Um, Drew Canali Messi has got himself a penalty. I'm not sure if that's uh, corner cut and whether he's um, been a bit reckless and hit the back of a driver. Yeah, potentially there in the safety car, 10th place, Brooklyn Annie Messi, as you said, has that penalty then. Just wanted to take a quick look at the position changes, so the front three remain the same, despite, obviously, like I mentioned, Kluchak being involved in a collision with championship rival Object Fungus, now down to 17th. 12 places lost there for Fungus off the start, despite initially getting away well, so he's down to 17th place and obviously a lot of drivers pitting so a lot of those drivers at the bottom you can see that have lost places have all taken a pit stop we'll load that information in just a second but the big gain is off the start then t-jerk twins lewis one and brookie nanny messi as the safety car then is coming in this lap tj yes um Hirsch, it was interesting to see how Hirsch controls this, whether he'll try to back the pack up, whether he'll try to catch him out early. Yeah, um, a little bit of a late call there, usually it calls it a little bit sooner, but it is only lap three, and let's see now what Hirsch does on the restart. We know how quick AMS drive is behind, but Hirsch has shown fantastic pace so far today. So it is championship leader Hirsch S 2004 who's going to lead the restart here then, and he is waiting till the last second to yeah. get going. That doesn't surprise the Vayner's drive behind him, and he's gone. He has gone, and he's weaving round. Going to turn one, looks like he's going to hold it, which he does. Looks like all the drivers are going turn one nice and clean again. He is indeed, and he seems to have initially at least held that lead then from AMS Drive. Collateral lads all over the back of Clues Trap then. Can add put pressure on the Alpine drive and he does go up the inside of OMT Klutstrak and takes that third place away from the Alpine driver. And so Ferrari two and three at the moment. Then David in the chat shouting out T Jerk who got up to eighth. He's down to tenth now, unfortunately, on that restart. Dean and Twins have both got past the Haas driver. Then Lewis one up to sixth for Red Bull. Then as we're seeing. Out in front, then. AMS drive. Hirsch has been it. passed. That was a fantastic in an move. Unusual, yeah, I was just about to mention an, an unusual overtaking position there. We didn't anticipate that at all. He must have just launched it up the inside there of Hirsch. And perhaps Hirsch thinking about the championship there and not defending it as much as he might have done in previous races, TJ. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Hirsch must have had a really bad set to do that. Well, that is all the back of him now as well. And this could be interesting going to turn one right here. As Collateral thinks the bear of him backs up a little bit. But um, DRS is not activated, so... Oh, and Collateral has got moved on. Collateral, this is side-by-side -side action. Collateral lads goes a little bit wide, as con contact. As Collateral lads gets the move done. So yeah, Hirsch had a real um, nightmare of half lap there. He has indeed, but perhaps the only comeuppance that really at the minute is going his way is the fact that Object Fungus hasn't made any progress from 17th at the moment as MV33 Red Bull then has had a moment and he's missing an end fence of his front wing. He'll have to pit now for a new one of those. He'll drop, obviously, of course, right behind the main pack and Klutzjack as who was running up in fourth place is now right at the back then he must have spun at turn eight yeah he must have done i didn't quite catch it but um, yeah for the point where i got on board of him it was just after turn eight so lewis won perhaps after his slightly disappointing qualifying up to fourth now then two and a half seconds behind the podium at the moment hirsch has got that gap now 
to a driver behind him, which might give him a little bit of breathing space with, in terms of the DRS at least. TJ, DRS, how powerful is it around this circuit? Um, it's, I'm not sure it's very, it, it's powerful down the first year, first straight, um, but with the speed that doesn't really notice it. But the, the, the actual first DRS sorry, I think is pretty powerful. So we've got Lucky Lambert then, looking to make a three-way fight here, and they're going inside and outside of Twins. And Look. who's going to come the better off from this little scrap? Twins looks like he wants to keep the place, and has he? I think he has. And that's a brilliant bit of defensive work there by Twins to keep the place from Lucky Lambert. Yeah, that's fantastic, that is. And it looks like it's all going... This battle's continuing on, and uh, all it's doing here is bringing Josh Lebarsu into, into, the, into the battle. Yeah, as now T Jerk looks to try and get involved, but he's run wide and Harrison and the Williams and Object Fungus now up to 14th place. Lucky Lambert's got the move done, but he's got Yeah, he has got the move done, but Josh Lamas is all over the back of these now. Might from a DRS down the straight, he's gonna get both these drivers on the hard on the hard tires. Very quick, McLaren as well, all over the back of an Alfa Romeo, Brookie Nanny Messi then with the DRS behind Silverside Boy, I don't think he'll throw up the inside here and doesn't, let's see what's going on behind them with this oh, train no, of Dean. cars. Oh, Dean's dropped it, he's out. Oh, Dean, oh, my heart's dear. broken for you there. They were, there was a battle going to turn one, Dean looked like he had the traction, but as he exited turn one, he just lost it. Will that cause a safety car? It's double <coughs> yellows at the minute in sector one. There is no safety car for that collision, surprisingly. So the game gets, well, at least it goes in Hirsch's favour at this point of the race up in third place. He does not want a safety car, the championship leader. He wants to get that gap up to fourth place Lewis while he's outside of DRS, definitely. What fight have we got going on? track at the moment it's still this fight with twins shots and harrison and fungus is at the moment stuck in a drs train it would seem yeah definitely it's gonna be hard to break that i think um because all of them are just getting the same speed down the straights as, as each other um it's all gonna be on the ers um, playing here but i'm not sure if any of them got anything left Um, As we have a driver into the pit lane, the Alpine of Twins into the pit lane then. He was on the hard tyres, let's see what tyres he goes to now then. As we can see, uh, the graphic for the tyres at the moment. And it seems in TJ that in terms of tyres, there's not much to split between the pack at the moment. There is some drivers on hards, like Lucky Lambert, who we'll look at now, who has Joshua Meister on the softs all over the rear of his car. Um, is Lucky Lambert struggling with those hard tyres now, TJ, do you think, at this point of the race? Um, I think so, yeah. Um, I think the hard tyres are notoriously bad in this game, um, and it's always a, a gamble to, to use them, um, but he'll definitely get an advantage later in the race. Um, so as long as he keep, keep, it, keep it clean and keep with them during the early part, they should come to him later. I didn't want to interrupt you talking there, TJ, but Joshua Meister has just gone into the back of Lucky Lambert and is now missing part of his front wing, so he'll have to pit for a new one of those as well. He just outbraked himself and he will now have to pit for a new front wing. Disappointing for the Red Bull driver then. Let's go back out in front then. AMS Drive has got the gap up to collateral adds now to 2.7 seconds, 2.8 now yeah. between the Ferrari drivers. He's not really pulling the gap of 40 would at this point. Uh, I know he's on eight lap um, old softs, but Flatall and Hirsch are doing a really good job of maintaining that gap there. Indeed. And Lewis at the moment now three and a half seconds behind Hirsch. So that gap is growing. Despite, as you said, Lewis on those eight lap old softs and so too is AMS Drive. So perhaps the tyre crossover is coming soon. We know, as I said, tyre wear's not too bad around here. Um, but perhaps now the medium tyre runners are just starting to favour their tyres a little bit more. As we've got Brooklyn and Missy half a second now, just show half a second behind. Silverside still hasn't cleared 
the Alfa Romeo and to perhaps confirm that the theory that we were talking about TJ there Noko he got now is all over the back of the Red Bull of Lewis 1 and he's on mediums and Lewis is on softs yeah so I think as you mentioned the crossovers definitely began to happen I think the guys on the softs are really beginning to struggle um, and that and that's one thing I heard the drivers talking about before the race that the um, that the softs just wear down really quickly especially on the high fuel load as Noko gets the move done here. Gets the move done onto DRS and Noko he got up to fourth place then ahead of Lewis 1. It'll be interesting to see if Lewis can respond to that. As we mentioned, Brookie Nanny Messi couldn't get past the other side. He's now past the Alfa Romeo driver as we were looking at Noko. He got get past Lewis 1 there. And as I mentioned, Lewis 1 looking to come back at Noko. He got there and goes up He's inside and retakes fourth place then. Yeah, so, um, oh, and Noko takes it back. There's a nice battle going on here, and Josh Meister is out. He's dropped it just, out. He's dropped it just before the pit entry. Yep, and the safety car is out then. So, so I'm, I'm not this sure, is interesting. I'm not sure who this plays at it. Object Fungus, I imagine, will stay out at this point. Uh, but what will Hirsch do? Will he stay out of them mediums or will he come in for a set of hards and push them to the end? Well, interesting message in the Twitch stream from Fishtix957 who believes that soft runners will be aiming for lap 13 and then maybe run mediums till the end. Bit of driver feedback there. We just saw Josh and Amaisa's car be cleared away. Plenty of drivers coming into the pits now then, TJ. And what do the likes of Collateral Ads and Hirsch do here? Surely AMS Drive will go onto the mediums, but what do Ads and Hirsch do? I'd be tempted to put a set of hards on it and just push to the end. As Collateral Well, just as you say that, it's. Yeah, it's mediums. So they're, they're really hoping for another safety car at some point, I imagine. As Hirsch has got the jump on Collateral in the pits. Hirsch has got the jump on collateral then, so perhaps the Ferrari team running too close together and collateral has clearly had to stack behind his Ferrari teammate and Hirsch now up to a next second place having not taken that pit, that pit stop and at the minute it's still a side boy in the lead somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This race is completely open now. Um, object Fungus in first. You know, it's um, he's ahead of his competitor again. But how long can he keep him behind on them, on them hard tyres? Obviously, Hirsch should have the better traction on them softs. Is that right? Yeah, so Hirsch has gone very aggressive. Just wanted to bring that back, actually. Monkey Boy in the chat saying, Hirsch onto softs. That is aggressive indeed. The only driver in the field then on soft tyres now, perhaps banking on another safety car. If we just discuss, obviously, Fishstick's point a little bit more about this, the soft tyre runners coming in on lap 13, TJ. Do you think now that they've pitted on lap 10, do you think, depending on the amount of safety cars and depending on the amount of laps we have left, do you think that they'll be able to stretch these mediums till the end now? I think so, yeah. I, I think, uh, don't get me wrong, I think it'll be feel like the dance on ice towards the end of the, of the race. But I think um, the medium runners can go to the end here. And that doesn't favour her shit at all. Yeah. Uh, well, looking at the Twitch chat again. Sergeant ran it off, tier 2 driver will be racing tomorrow, we are live tomorrow and there's still some titles and points and places to be decided in the tier 2 championship so to be sure, uh, be sure to, sorry, to tune into that one tomorrow, he says Silverside getting a nosebleed, being out in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um... So Silverside doesn't have a very good reputation of being in the top three. I don't mean to curse you here, Silverside, but yesterday when he was running, uh, running in P3 in our uh, reserve social race, he uh, unfortunately picked a puncture up and uh, retired on track with, uh, with two laps to go. 
So uh, he'll. I just want to discuss quickly here. Sorry, TJ, before the safety car comes in. I uh, just want to go back to the title fight. Ash J eighty eight. Ash Ash J J eighty eight. I should say, says that Harrison at the moment, Object's teammate, ahead of him at the moment. What should he do here? Can he play some part in his teammates' championship here? I think so. If it's, if if the, if the drivers are talking or the team's talking to the drivers. They'll certainly be asking for Harrison to stay out and hold up AMS Drive for as long as he pop. Oh, sorry, not AMS Drive. Hot well, yeah, hold up AMS Drive and Hirsch. You no, know, just just keep them drivers behind. Hurt Hirsch as much as you can. Um, so it's going to be well, very interesting. Well, the Aston Martin, sorry, are all over the back of Silverside Boy here as he looks to get going, and perhaps Silverside Boy has caught the Aston Martin snapping slightly as they were all over the back of him, and AMS Drive might already be passed. And Hirsch as well here, looking to get the inside of his championship rival. AMS Drive gets the move done. Hirsch now looking to get the move done as well. The inside the championship rivals here. Battling side by side on track. And Hirsch has got the move done on those soft tyres. And so Harrison not playing the team game with his teammate. The object already behind Hirsch here. But is he going to look to have a go with the inside? He is indeed. And can he get the move redone on his championship rival? He does. And he takes fourth place away from the Haas driver despite the tyre advantage object fungus finding a way back ahead yeah this is really oh and Hirsch is trapped oh ho, ho. that's a good save from Hirsch either he almost spun it to an eight a big wobble from Hirsch but he saves it coming out of turn eight as TJ said but he did lose the basic collateral lads then so what a start that was under the safety car. The Aston Martins just seemed to have gone a little bit early and almost passed Silverside Boy before he got going there. And that played into the hands of AMS driving Hirsch, but now Hirsch with that wobble down to sixth place and how quickly can he get past the Ferrari ahead of him? I imagine with them softs he could do it pretty quick, but the issue is that there's a lot of very slipstream train going on here and he, 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 need, he needs to clear Clark Lodge for his quickest time to benefit them soft tyres now. Well, and he's now going to have to go through his championship rival to get through collateral ads as ads has passed Object Fungus down into turn one then. So now the championship rivals back together on track and surely that tyre advantage is going to play into Hirsch's hand here. And he dives right up the inside, making those tyres count. And he gets the move done then on object fungus who sticks behind him once again these two know exactly what's at stake at the moment and despite the tire difference objects really trying to push him here but surely 11 lap old hard tires at this point tj they're just going to be swallowed up by the drivers around him yeah i'd imagine so um once he, uh, he's got the advantage going later into the race so if he keeps these tires on he'll have the advantage definitely and all he wants to do here is try to keep up with Hirsch because them softs, give another, I don't know, five, six, seven laps, they'll be just as bad as, as, the, as the hards. If not, the hards might be a little bit better. So it's all about if he can keep up here now. Well, Tornado is DN, D, uh, DNF, sorry, I should say. I was about to say DRS enabled. It's DNF to turn one. His car is just cleared in time. As Silverside, who's still holding the lead, it should be said, at this point on 12 lap old mediums. He's doing a great job out in front at the minute is the Alfa Romeo driver and I have a feeling that the Ferrari behind you is about to get past very shortly though um, but at the moment Object Fungus two tenths behind his teammate he, uh, his championship rival sorry he is very much keeping up with Hirsch at this stage of the race somehow yeah it's, um, it's, it's very interesting. I'm not sure if Hirsch is playing a bit of time management here or whether he's been, you know, the, the dirty out of back of Platt Light is, is hurting him. Um, as we've got a spinner at turn eight. And there's chaos ensuing down at turn eight as well. There's carbon fibre everywhere. I'm not too sure the initial spinner was. It might have been Noko he got. But I think Shots Too Drippy has no front wing. He does indeed have no front wing. I think, was, I, think I saw an entrance fly somewhere as well. Just checking the driver's front wings now to see what's going on there. But there is passes going on just ahead. There's Lucky Lambert all over the back of Object Fungus now, who looks like he wants to add more misery to his race so far. 
and indeed looks like he's going to get the job done even before they go into the breaking zone and does object yeah. fungus at this point must surely be hoping for another safety car within the next couple of laps yeah he must be um, the only advantage he's got here is he's hurting them soft tires he's stuck in a drs train here and yes he's got the tire advantage but how long can he run this close as he well, takes just to say that to he goes <laughs> yeah he goes straight up the inside of Silverside Boy into third place then. What a race we're having so far. This is absolutely brilliant. And the championship, the championship permutations, of course, adding that spice to this race. Hirsch up in third place. Object in sixth. TJ, I'm going to need you to stay on the maths throughout this, <laughs> throughout this race. <laughs> Please compute if you can yeah. what this means as we go through. As I try to keep up with the drama that's going, up, going on track at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to. Lucky keep up. Lambert now on the back of Silverside Boy. Yeah, um, Silverside Boy and them 13 old um, black mediums and tyres there. Um, that they're definitely not working here with all the drivers with uh, fresh tyres around me. Um, it was best boy, and it might pay off if there's another safe car. Um, but I imagine he is playing for a safety car at this point. So Lucky Lambert then passes Silverside Boy for fourth place. The leader after the safety car period down to fifth now. As you mentioned, there's 14 lap old mediums. He'll have to get rid of those shortly and stick a set of softs on till the end of the race. Perhaps waiting for a safety car if we're going to get one to make the most of that opportunity then. Our championship man of the league as, as i should mention there's an alpine round it's twins he's not retired though crucially i think for this race he hasn't retired so i don't think there'll be a safety car and he is underway and there's more yellow flags out as well uh, around that turn eight they've cleared now our championship man for the league fishdix957 says in the chat at the moment it's a 14 point gap from Hirsch to Fungus, I'm assuming if that's if they finished where they are at the moment. So a 14 point gap going into the final race in Imola next Thursday. Of course, there's still just over, just under, sorry, I should say, half of this race still to go. Lucky Lambert now setting the fastest lap of the race as we're watching Hirsch wanting to clear collateral lads as soon as possible, surely to make those soft tyres count. Yeah, uh, it definitely does. I, I'm beginning to think here, can Hirsch push these softs to the end? I mean, I think that's a massive ask of him, but if he picks at this point, and there's not another safety car, I can't see how he pulls us back. Yeah. He has got a pit, but so too has his championship rival, and perhaps that's what, maybe that's what Hirsch was thinking of. Maybe he was thinking to go aggressive. He knows he hasn't particularly got to win this race. He's just got to finish ahead on track from his teammate. Uh, not his teammate, sorry, his championship rival. As long as he finishes ahead of him, he has the advantage still into Imola. It's an aggressive strategy from Hirsch, but in terms of the championship, it might pay off here. And of course, if, if there is another safety car, then he might have played an absolute blinder. Because I imagine if there's a late safety car, everybody will be in for softs. Yeah, um, interesting answer to race either way at this point. Um, I mean, if Hirsch and Object, you know, people I'm watching look at the Twitch stream now and they're saying they'll have to pet at some point, you know, it, it brings the other gents up like Kluschak and, and people like that into the battle, into the final race. Indeed, indeed, it is as Hirsch. Went right up behind collateral lads into turn one there, but thought better of it, perhaps protecting his championship advantage at the moment. He doesn't need to do any heroics here, Hirsch. All he has to do is finish ahead of Object to continue that advantage into the final round. Object on those 16 lap, uh, lap old hard tyres at the moment. Unable to close and keep up with the top four now. As Lucky Lambert has indeed joined the top three here on those medium tyres TJ so perhaps you were hinting at it earlier we're at seven laps now 
the medium tyres, Lucky Numbers players has brought him back into the podium fight. And I'm being reliably informed in the, the stream that the only driver is still to pit due to tyre uh, selections are Hirsch and Ads, who both have run medium, medium, uh, soft, soft. So they've run the same compound at the moment. As, oh, sorry, I just want to cut back to Hirsch here, who is currently following Ads into turn one. Goes up the inside of the Ferrari driver then. And does put a car between himself and the fast lucky Lambert. And he's up to second place. But as I was saying there, TJ, it is Hirsch and Klaasrad still to pit as they've... Oh, it's Hirsch's round! He's in oh, the wall! Oh, he's out! Hirsch is in the wall! He's round! He's out! Oh, no! Massive, massive permutations for the championship! Hirsch is round! And out! This bad effect of... I imagine all drivers at this point are going to dive in the pits for a, a set of softs here. But can safety object, car is out. Can, I, can sorry, object can object point this win this year? Well, I was just about to say, object fungus. <laughs> he wanted a safety car. He's got one at the expense of his championship rival, Hirsch, leading the championship by four points into this race. Object, even if he wins this race cannot take the championship today but surely he's in the best position now to have a go at getting the gap as big as possible and surely they're all going to come in for the soft tyres as, as you said yeah I think it's a no brainer the only issue here is is that the Ferraris are double stacking in the gap uh, no doubt they'll have a male to get a double stack so <clears throat> it, it's it, mediums, it's mediums, it's mediums for object focused. I just want to say something there, TJ, it's oh mediums. Oh no, oh no. So he's gone for the medium tyres till the end of the race. I think... Surely that. that's a mistake there. Oh no, come out, come out, come out from hards. Uh, there's been an up, there's been there's definitely a mistake here. I, I think Object Fungus has done the wrong wrong move here. He has been absolutely swallowed up by these soft runners. This race has been absolutely crazy. It's AMS Drive apparently <laughs> disqualified. No. Ignoring the yellow flags. No. <laughs> what has happened here? Wow. What is going on in this race? Surely one of the most bizarre races of the season. <laughs> Hirsch has crashed out of the Portimao Round 21 Grand Prix. I I've got more of a speechless TJ. I can't believe what has happened in this race. Oh. So 13 runners left. 10 on the soft, 2 on the medium, 1 on the hards, for some, some <laughs> strange reason. Uh, I mean, Ads on the hard tyres. It should be mentioned that this late, this late safety car probably doesn't help Ads at all, as people in the stream have pointed out that the hard, uh, sorry, Ads has got a 10 second penalty to be applied to him after this race should he finish, um, from a few weeks back, I believe. Um, so that probably won't that that's gonna only help object fungus again who's in third now so at the moment object fungus is a net second and as we can see in in the twitch chat uh, TJ I think we've discussed this during the race as well we've seen as drivers get towards lap seven or eight that the soft tires just just fade away don't they and Mediums really coming to their own. We saw it with Lucky Lambert in, in that stint there just before this safety car. So, has Object Fungus? I'm assuming the safety car will or possibly be in on this lap. He'll be hoping they're in on this lap anyway. Uh, has Object Fungus made the right call here? I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I know the softs <laughs> are by lap seven, lap eight have been, have been dropping off, but the guys are running on hardly any fuel on board now. Some softs and reality should go a little bit longer. So potentially we've only got 10, 11 laps of racing. So if the guys see them go to lap 9, lap 10, 
an object fungus is definitely done the wrong choice here. So we should mention at this point, we just look at the penalties and Silverside Boy does have a drive-through. Um, not too sure what that was for. I didn't see that pop up in all the madness. Not 100% what that is for. Um, so he's not got that fifth place. Uh, a few drivers with three seconds at the moment. Not too many penalties. Uh, not as much as I'm expecting anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main talking point surely is Hirsch. Crashing out, turn three, TJ. I know you love turn three. Um, <laughs> just, just talk us through, TJ. At turn three, what is it that you get wrong that can cause a collision like we saw with Hirsch? I think, um, it, obviously, it's, it's a little bit of a. It's it, you, you come off the corner and you're going into another corner as quick as you can with a bit of a, with a downhill hot uphill section to it. So all it takes a little bit of a squirt and throttle. And because of the, how, the, how the track changes, you just lose the grip. And I was like, would like to come out to see what Hirsch did there. But I imagine it's something very similar to that. Yeah, we did catch it just on stream. I think we saw it, not quite on board, but we did see it. it didn't give us the best camera angle, uh, to say the least. <laughs> Safety car will surely be in on this lap now the <coughs> field is bunched together just looking at the twitch stream and we've got fish 957 you can overload the rears on turn four i think that's what you were saying yeah um in terms of you just go around and hit the wall on the inside there i think you either run the risk of running wide or obviously collecting the wall on the inside and hirsch got the one that punished him the most unfortunately uh, David Lowface, yep, confirming what we said earlier about uh, that drive-through penalty. If, if uh, Silverside Boy wants to tell us what he got it for, we couldn't, or you want to look at the race director, TJ. I couldn't mm. remember what happened there in all the uh, the madness. We've got uh, <laughs> David Lowface, object in silver, going to prove to be the mastermind on these mediums. That's something else we spoke about <laughs> as well, and I think. We'll only know the answer to that in just about 10 laps time then. Yeah. I think it is going to be the last 10 laps that are the most telling here. Yeah, that's right. So it's quick, the silver side boy got his driver pounds for speeding on the safety car. So speeding on the safety <clears> car. It'll be interesting to see how quickly he serves that penalty and safety car in on this lap then. So, Lucky Lambert will lead the field away here. He effectively becomes the safety car now. Adds all over the back of it. Lucky Lambert chose to go early, it seems, in contrast to what the other safety car leaders were doing earlier on. Look at the gap between Lewis and the rest of the pack. The top four of Balti. Caught napping there then, perhaps Brocky Danny Messi, who is, as you said, almost three seconds back off Lewis one now. So there is a fight then between the top four and once again i'll say it again that this is only going to benefit object fungus in his title fight that gap now between him and the main soft runners yeah definitely um <clears throat> i mean this that, that might play to cut lads his hand a little bit with the gap between fourth and fifth he's, he's also got a 10 second penalty he, he just needs to keep his head down now and, and go for it um but don't, don't turn away viewers, this is going to be an interesting end to race. Interesting indeed then, as I mentioned some of the drivers with penalties, Silver Star Boy has served his drive through early, early on then. So, he, I think he served that drive through immediately. I'm, I'm just wondering, it, he did serve that drive through immediately, did that caused the rest of the gap did he want? I, I don't know. I didn't catch it because we were looking at the front of the field. But were the other drivers conscious of overtaking him as he was pulling into the pit lane? Oh, um, and that is the reason that there was the gap. Or maybe, yeah. I mean, uh, some side boy definitely like he backed the pack up for some reason. Um, but I'm not quite sure why he's done it. And like, it could be because drivers didn't want to overtake, or, or whatever. Some side boys try to build that little gap up for himself, which if he has, is very naughty, naughty on him. Five second penalty for Twins, ignoring yellow flags. I, I didn't really see any yellow flags, um, but 
David Lowface would be proud of me if I said this game is perfect and has no bugs. <laughs> um, we've seen there is definitely some bugs in this race, uh, this game, uh, to say the least. From this race, then there's a big fight going on at the minute at the tail end <laughs> of the points. Then, so Twins now down to 10th place, he's been swallowed up by the drivers behind him, and down to 10th now is the Alpine driver. Knocker, we got up to 9th. It should be mentioned actually, Williams title fight at the moment, They're 8th and 9th as it is. Um, Perhaps not as many points as they were hoping for. Monkey Boy Kurt unfortunately couldn't be here. The regular Williams driver. I know he'll be willing these two on for the title fight. As Lucky Lambert sits in the fastest lap. Um, well, I wonder if they can get themselves into a good few points by the end of this race, TJ. Yeah, I reckon so. Um, you know, as, as the DR racing pretty good here. Shots is just on a move on MP33. Um, yeah, the Williams, oh, and MB33 just lost two places in two corners as the Williams drivers are marching through. So, yeah, really good point yeah. for you. I think what's interesting here as well is that Object cannot get the move done on Clark Lads. I don't know whether he's trying to play it safe, knowing if he finishes that, he gets a good point advantage into the next race, or whether I just did a fantastic job on holding on them, on them, on them hearts. He is indeed. And but we know that Ads has got his in-game penalty and he's got an additional 10 seconds to go against him as well. So Object Fung is technically running a net second place and our standings man Fishsticks957 has informed me that the gap going to Imola, if it was to finish like this on track at the moment, would be 14 points then in the final race in favour of Object, which just seems, I think, if I was in F Object Fungus' shoes right now, given Hirsch getting pole, and his performance at the start of this race, I bet he can barely believe the position he's found himself in. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he, he definitely would have wanted to expect to face like this, and then gaining um, the, the championship lead. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, he had a terrible start object, unfortunately, and yeah, I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd think I'd be doing it at that point. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just wondering if, if you know, Object Fungus, at the moment, I know he's stuck behind Ads, but he can see that Ads has got that penalty. You must know he has, uh, at least going by the, the viewers' uh, you know, opinions anyway, he's perhaps masterminded his decision to go on those mediums and has the better tyres on. He hasn't got to do any heroics here. He's found himself in a position I don't think he would have expected to find himself in, to say the least. And, you know, it'd be absolutely unbelievable if he was to spin out now so perhaps he's just not taking any risks in trying to pass ads on track yeah but the risk he's going here is is lewis is gaining and he's getting to it he, he, he hasn't got drs this time but he's getting into the drs of object and now object will want to try and keep lewis behind him to try and maximize the amount of points he gets here so he has got a bit of a, a gamble to take here. Does he sit where he is and hope he can keep Lewis behind? Or does he take the risk and try to take battle now? Indeed, as Brookie Nanny Messi, we just rode on board with pushing Klushak through a corner then. Um, that's the other closest fight really on track. I remember MV33 Red Bull behind Noko, he got in the Williams. As Klushak gets it wrong, Coming out of turn six there, but couldn't quite. And Messi couldn't quite get back through his bucket. And Messi saves a drift through the dreaded turn eight there as well. Then let's have a look, see what's going back out on in front. Object Fungus then still within DRS of ads. I'm just wondering if that's helping him in terms of the gap to Lewis, who doesn't have DRS at the moment. Object Fungus, it should be said, with very healthy ERS as well. Perhaps, TJ, this might back up the argument that Object Fungus perhaps doesn't want to risk anything against ads here. 84% ERS compared to zero. Surely, uh, there has to come a time where Object just thinks, yep, yeah, I'm going to make the move and put another car between myself and the guys behind him. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, and I think he'll, 
you'll want to do it in the cleanest way, so you'll definitely do it in the DRS zone for definite. Um, to not risk anything, it, it's, a, it's just a matter of time now, I think. Um, he will want to put that gap between, as you said. Big shout out to Kluschek as well, he's running P5, and now I'm not sure whether this pulls him into championship battle or not, whether it gives him a bit of an outside chance. Um, I'm not sure about the gap if uh, Petrix is still listening. Um, does Kluschek come into this battle now? No. No, he, do he doesn't come into the championship fight. He is high up there, so it might give him a better finishing in the standings, but he isn't in with a shout of the championship. It is just down to these two, Object Fungus and Hirsch, who people that have been viewing this race in its distance. We saw earlier on this race, Hirsch, S2004, take pole position in qualifying. It's kept right at the front throughout the entire race in the podium positions. Led the early stages of the race before being passed by AMS Drive, who uh, found himself unfortunately disqualified. But now, Hirsch is out, as you can see. Championship challenger, Object Fungus, still riding in a net second place, it should be said, with those penalties. 18 points coming his way. Interesting to look, perhaps, at the fastest lap at the moment, and he is going to look at Lambert's way. He's got the move on Lewis. He has had a bit of pace his past couple laps. Um, might be a little bit too late to try and challenge Object here, but... If he can keep this up, he might be on the back of object at challenge for P3. Yeah, definitely. And he will want to get onto the podium. And he will technically get onto the podium. So I think if it was to finish like this, we'd pull Bootstrack in for the interview. Um, as we know that Ads will be demoted with that penalty that he has. Um, despite him only having that punch. See how much the in-game punches are at the moment. So three seconds for Ads, six seconds for Knocker we got, six seconds for Tedrick, six seconds for Harrison, three seconds for Twins. Uh, there's not really many fights going on in the field at the moment. Knocker we got is the closest behind MV33 Red Bull who got past him earlier on, a couple of laps prior. He does have a very slender ERS advantage, but he has a massive DRS advantage and gets past the Alfa Romeo driver before the braking zone down into turn one. And Williams back up to seventh and eighth, but Knocker we got with that penalty then will find himself relegated uh, back down to ninth place with the penalties of the drivers of them. So now, now there's a, it's quieting down a little bit and we haven't had much chance to do it. And David Lawface would be very disappointed if we didn't do it. I think it's time we turn to sponsor of the week. So, sponsor of the week. I mean, sponsor and <laughs> I, I, I. I changed it off. I try not to play my bit. Thursday um, night sponsors. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So uh, what is your bevy of the week? My bevy of the week is a watermelon flavored vodka, chilled in the freezer, couple of cubes of ice, nice, nice and neat drink you can have. Very, very fruity. A little bit too sweet for me, though, personally. Um, but it is a watermelon vodka. Um, I already know what your uh, your your baby of the, the night is, I should say. Do you want to uh, tell the viewers what your, your baby of the night is, TJ? Yeah, sure. So it's a, a bit of a shout out to Monkey Boy. It's uh, I seem to be drinking his shoulders tonight. Um, a very nice whiskey. Um, a couple of ice cubes as well. So it's a bit of coke. I'd, I'd highly recommend to look drinks whiskey. Monkey Boy's shoulders, you appear to be drinking. Not too sure <laughs> he invited you to drink his shoulders, <laughs> but anyway. That's cleared that up then. As <clears throat> Ads gets another three seconds time penalty then, so that will drop him down even further now. I'm just trying to do the math quickly in my head to see if he drops out of the points with all of his penalties. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Uh, I think he'll be in the. He might be ninth or tenth at the moment. Um, shots too drippy, getting more penalties. Yeah, I mean, there's still another lap to go. People can still get penalties before the end of the race, so we won't bother having an attempt at calculating that as object fungus then 
still in third place. I bet he will feel like he's got a lottery ticket after tonight's event. It's closing up on ads. Ridiculous in turn one, not quite enough to get past him though. Now I'm only given the option of a shoulder cam for half the drivers, thank you. <laughs> Back to having a decent camera angle then. Looking at Messi side by side with Kruitz trap then. And this will be for the final podium place. Looking at Messi up the inside of Kruitz trap. Gets the move done. Let's see if Kruitz trap can have a go back at him. Through seven and eight then. Under pressure here, will any of the drivers on their ward tyres have a mishap? No, they both keep it clean. They will race to the end. I can't imagine as many more overtaking places now for Clutch Jack to snatch that podium place back. Will the McLaren driver hold his own here? Brookie Nani Messi from 20th on the grid up to third, a net third now. What a podium it will be. But Lucky Lambert then, who's led since the second safety car, takes the win for Mercedes. 26 points for their championship overall. Object Fungus, as we mentioned, the championship challenger takes second place for Aston Martin. What a drive for him. I think after his start being spun round early on, I think that's... I don't think... Dreamed of getting second place, but he's done it. And even better news for him, his championship rival, Hirsch S2004, out of the race then. No points for him today. 18 for Object Fungus. The gap is 14 then. Going to the last round next Thursday in Imola. Brookie Nanny Messi from 20th on the grid to third in the race. Perhaps just to, just to sum up, what a crazy race we have just watched. Klutschak unfortunately misses out on a podium, but good drive from him in the end. That's as far as I got reading to. Let's watch the podium, <coughs> the yeah. top three again. As, TJ, as, your um, comment. As, I mean, that was a fantastic race. We said it was going to be close, it was going to be interesting. <laughs> And it's certainly delivered. It's it's thrown a curveball into the championship. Um and yeah. Yeah, going into Emily, that it's still anyone's. It's um it's it's gonna be crazy. And all I can say is tune in this time next week to watch how it unfolds. Indeed, it is still the difference between <coughs> the first and a fifth place that separates First and second in the Tier 1 Championship. But it is Lucky Lambert who takes the win today. And the fastest lap for 26 points for Mercedes. A massive boost for their overall championship battle at the moment with Alpha Tauri. Second place for Object Fungus. We've already covered that one. Brookie Nani Messi, third for him. Brilliant from the back. I don't think many would argue against him being driver of the day. If not Object Fungus after he climbed back off the canvas from 17th. Klutschak unfortunate to miss out on a podium in fourth. Lewis one, as we call him in the league, fifth for him from 16th as well. Fantastic drive. Collateral adds in sixth on the road, but will fall down following his 10th place penalty to be added. I think he drops to perhaps 10th, maybe? I couldn't quite work it out then. He's flitched back onto the, uh, the penalties. 7th for Shots 2 Drippy for Williams, MV33 Red Bull, 8th for his first Alfa Romeo drive in that full-time seat. Knocker we got in ninth for Williams, 10th for OMT T-Jerk. Again, another points finish for T-Jerk. As I said in qualifying, perhaps highlighting his improvement during these uh, last three events. Harrison just misses out on the points in 11th for Aston Martin, 12th for Silverside Boy, he'll be gutted. To have got that drive through penalty under safety car twins finishes last of those to finish on the road in 13th. And there you have it, Hirsch S 2004. We'll say it again, he'll be devastated to have crashed out of that race. 
No points for him today. A four point lead in the championship turns into a 14 point deficit for the Scot. He'll be devastated at that, but he's not down and out yet. As I said, it's only the difference between a first and a fifth place. We have got some drivers in the party. This lobby isn't ending, so I can't show you their cars. <laughs> TJ, who have we got in the party? I think it's just Object uh, and Broken Animacy at the Animacy. moment. Yeah. yeah, let's see if we can get Lucky Lambert in. Not sure he has a mic to be able to talk to us. No, I haven't asked him again, so I'll wait to see if he does message or anything. We'll wait to see if he joins, and while we give him a minute or so to join TJ, I want to ask you for your driver of the day there. Cool. Um, I mean, there's a few drivers this could, this could go to, you know, take enough project from us from, from his first lap from last, um, well, from high up to go to last, finish second, that's unbelievable. Rookie Nani Messi started back in the grid, finished in P3. Uh, um, Lewis has had another good drive here. Um, oh god, I, I I don't like doing drive of the day, um, but I've got to push it for one, TJ. I've got to put it to object. I think um, you know the, the the way that his race started to how it finished. It was such a sensible drive after the last safety car. He played it safe. He played it smart. He didn't do anything bash. Um, and he, he, he thought about going into Emler with that championship lead. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, TJ. I think after turn one, where we saw Kluge Jack make contact <coughs> with Object Fungus, and Object Fungus dropped right down to 17th to pull yourself back up, like I said, and get that second place. An incredible finish, especially when you're fighting for a championship as he is. It doesn't look like we're going to get Lucky Lambert joining us, unfortunately. So it looks like we're only going to get an interview with second and third place, who I'm sure everybody wants to hear from. TJ, I'll give you the pleasure of interviewing Brocky Nani Messi, who again went from 20th to get onto that podium. And I'll interview Object Fungus afterwards. So TJ, if you want to take away the interview with Brocky Nani Messi. Yep, just to make sure you've got your name included, lads. Um, so yeah, Brocky Nani Messi. I mean, let, let's start with qualifying. What what happened? It looked like you were struggling to get laps in. Um, did you have the wrong setup? Or were you just finding it a bit too a bit too twitchy to get into corners? So how how did you manage to um, how did you manage to reset your mind frame? Obviously, I I, I imagine you were very disappointed sort of qualifying P20. Um, how did you how did you set your mind frame to to the race and knowing you've got get, knowing you could get your head down and battle your way through the field? <laughs> I mean, it's it might, it's 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 how you do it, I suppose. Whatever calms you down and gets you reset. Um, so yeah, as, as we mentioned, that you, you could have been uh, you were the potential for driving a day where you drive. I think Object just did pick you towards the end, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, take nothing away from P20 to P3. That's that is a fantastic drive. I mean, given all the given all the safety cars out there, did, did you think you could get on the podium? Um, I mean, what 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 were you thinking during the race?
How did you, um, I'll make this my last question so Ben can interview it. Object, um, how are you, how do you find Emily? Is it a track you're looking forward to? That's fantastic. Um, yeah, congratulations um, on your on your P three. Fantastic drive from yourself. Um, and now I'll hand over to Bedel. Yep. Yeah, so congratulations, Brooklyn and Messi. Well done on your P three, as TJ said. I'll echo that sentiment. Uh, Object Fungus. Uh, just make sure you've got your audio included, as TJ said. Um, but of course, uh, the first talking point. We'll, we'll start from the top. Uh, we'll go from qualifying. Um, object. I think this has been a feature of your season really so far. You've not been the fastest qualifier, but you've obviously had better race pace. Um, so, was you satisfied with your qualifying result? Well, P5 was quite okay, I guess. Uh, I think I could have been like uh, one or maybe even two places, but I, think, I just think one place would have been uh, there because I lost, I don't know, like one and a half. Uh, tenth in the second sector for my fast lap, so uh, yeah. But um, obviously, I think it, it has been in every race. My race pace is um, a lot better than my quality pace. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, like I said, that's been a feature of your uh, season so far, and probably why you found yourself in the position that you're in now so let's just talk about your race i really want to go back to that first lap incident with you and clues jack uh i caught it slightly on the stream i didn't quite see in detail what happened do you want to just talk us through that and obviously why it ended up with you resulting in 17 from the first lap yeah uh, first of all um in the formation lap there has been like uh, a little thing that happened, it was uh, Super Baity that just uh, was lagging around a bit. I don't even think that he did it on purpose, but uh, he hit me on the formation lap, so I was disqualified. So I had cold as tires and well, uh, then the race started. I had quite an acceptable start, was trying to go down the inside with the track. I don't even know exactly what happened. Um, I have to look at it again, but uh, we made contact and I end up spinning, so that compromised my race quite hard. But uh, well, in the end, not that much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fantastic drive. I uh, just want to talk about the middle of your race at the point in which you find yourself on those hard tires, very, very worn, and I know drivers were going past you, uh, and you saw your championship rival Hirsch out in front, you know, getting away from you. He went aggressive with his strategy on the soft tires. What was your mindset at this point? Did you really think that, you know, it was kind of, you know, game, set and match at this point? Did you think the the strategy hadn't worked out for you? Uh, it would have been very, very difficult on the hearts. Um, but I think that my pace on the hearts wasn't even that bad because I uh, was stuck behind a DRS train quite hard. And uh, yeah, then there came the safety car and I stayed out with my heart trying to go to the end. But I was very, very worried about the tires because there was uh, 15 laps or something. I don't remember exactly how much was left, but my tires had already 40% uh, wear. So I was pretty, pretty, pretty um, um, worried about the tires. But uh, well, at the safety car reset, I got overtaken by quite a lot of people. I completely missed out the restart. Was uh, quite confusing with the two in front going side by side, braking and uh, going then. And there was a massive gap between me and um, them in front. So I got overtaken by two, three cars. And then there was Hirsch. And uh, was, uh, yeah, although more worried because he was on the soft. So he got past quite easy, but I. Tried to, challenge, uh, tried to challenge him as hard as possible and I even got uh, in front once but then uh, when he overtook me it was pretty clear that we will pull away but um, as collateral Lucky Lambert I think and um, Hirsch were fighting I could keep quite hard the pace with them I just lost about uh, 
a few tens, so that's not that much on the hearts. And I was uh, thinking that Hirsch maybe will have to pit again because the softs will have been a very, very, very aggressive strategy. And uh, to be honest, I don't think that uh, it would have worked with the softs. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely an aggressive strategy from Hirsch, and it's nice that you kept that in mind and perhaps shows that you're thinking a little bit more, obviously, in terms of the championship rather than the individual race. Uh, I just wanted to touch on, there was a couple of people that mentioned it, your teammate Harrison. He was ahead of you for a large part of the opening part of the race. I don't want to bring too much controversy into this interview, but I do want to push you on it slightly. Do you think he could have done a little bit more to help you, knowing that you're in the fight for the driver's title? Uh, well, yes, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if he knew the standings and if he looked at the Members' Lounge Challenge or something. But, uh, so, yeah, he was out in front, even with a, even with a penalty. So, a uh, logical scene, he should have let me pass, but um, I don't, I don't mind. He, he's, he's, he's driving his own race, so I don't care. He can do whatever he wants. A nice, a nice impartial response from you there, Object. And of course, I will touch on the race next week, Imola. You've managed to turn a four-point deficit into a 14-point game, uh, game sorry, going into that race. I probably am going to assume that based on the qualifying and the race, you didn't expect that going into next week. Does now the the point gap alter your mindset going into Imola next week? And overall, is it a track that you feel strongly, you know, uh, one way or the other about? Well, I will have to see because I didn't race that much in Imola. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely worried, even though I have a 40 point lead. So, because I saw how fast Hirsch was around here. And they got my pants very, very shitty. So, uh, well, we will see. I have to train quite a lot now for Imola, but uh, let's see. Let's see. Yep, and hopefully for you, that uh, practicing pays off next week. And thank you for your interview, and congratulations again to you both for the podiums you both got today. Um, I know TJ feels the exact same. I'm assuming he's still here waiting to congratulate you both as well. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations, gents. Fantastic drive from you both. Thanks. Yep. No, brilliant. Brilliant race today. Absolutely thrilling to watch. Everyone, thank you for joining us live. Thank you for watching us on, on, on playback. Thank you for watching if you're on YouTube. It was an absolutely brilliant race and it sets the scene for a fantastic season finale in tier one next thursday same time around imola a reminder again 14 points between the top two object fungus now with the advantage over hirsch going into the final race join us next thursday as i said the same time then for the season finale of fprl tier one but it's goodbye from me and goodbye from my co-coms tjm Yep, thanks all. And goodbye from our podium finishers, and we'll see you next week, hopefully. <laughs>